Summertime is a fabulous time for fresh fruits that are delicious and so good for you. Today, I would like to tell you about a fresh fruit dessert that is absolutely beautiful to serve, creative in how you decide to put it together, and very, very easy to make. I call it the Real Grandma's Fresh Fruit Tart. So, are you ready? So as I said at the beginning, this is the easiest dessert you can think of to make, but it's incredible. I'm gonna start out making the actual tart. It's like making a little bit of shortbread that you'll put into your tart pan. The pan itself is like many tart pans. I prefer to use the one that has the beautiful scalloped edges and then the removable center. That way when it's done, I can just lift up, put my tart on a pretty plate, and it's very easy to clean up. So let's go ahead and start with the, the actual crust. Um, this only calls for three ingredients. So in your food processor, you're going to want to have a cup and a half of flour. And then we're gonna to add to that a half a cup of powdered sugar. It doesn't matter which brand you use, but the powdered sugar, the texture of it is nicer for your crust. And if it's a little bit more than half, that's all right, it's not gonna hurt anything. You don't have to level that ingredient. And then for the shortbread um, end of it, aspect of it, you're gonna take one and a half sticks of butter. And again, I prefer butter to margarine. The flavor is better, and it's actually better for you than to have an artificially produced ingredient. We do want to enjoy our desserts and the flavors as well as have it as healthy as possible. Um, we'll be processing this together. One of the easiest ways to get better to mix in a food processor is to take your um, sticks of butter while they're still pretty firm from, I just took these out of the refrigerator. Cut them into little cubes. So I'm cutting it in half here, and then I'm gonna just slice it and put those into the food processor and it will help on blending it to keep the flavors even and to let this butter um, properly mix with the dry ingredients. Once that's in, you'll just put your lid on and turn it on. So you can see that it's going around and around and as the, the mixtures come together, you're gonna to notice that it forms a ball. When it's formed a ball, your crust is done and ready to put into your pan. And now it's forming a ball, so the crust is ready. Very good. So we'll go ahead and open up our processor. And as always, when you pour it and you have the blade in, you want to be careful that the blade doesn't cut you. Just dump it out on your breadboard. And you notice a little bit of powdery mixture came out. That's fine. You could just put it together like that. To start, let's go ahead and preheat the oven, okay? So again, I have a convection oven. Normally you would cook this at 350. I'm going to set mine for 325 and then we'll have that heat up while we get the rest of the crust ready. Now, this recipe is perfect for a 12-inch tort pan. I happen to be using a 9-inch because I'm going to be bringing it to a family of two, and so I made, I'm, I'm making this size. And for that, I'm just gonna cut off a piece of this so that I don't have too much of the dough. I'll put it in a baggie, and these will make delicious shortbread cookies. You just put them on a cookie sheet, bake them, and you have a couple, two, two or three nice shortbread cookies. So now we're going to just take our basic dough, it's a little bit sticky, and just set it in your pan, smush it out a little bit, and then start pushing it against the edges so that you fill up all of these beautiful little scallop 
edges in the pan. Don't worry as you're doing this if you leave holes in your crust. You'll fill those in when you start spreading the bottom of it. But it's important to make sure that you have it evenly distributed along the edges so that your um, crust is consistent all the way around. You'll notice that as I'm pressing it in now to the edges, I'm pulling off evenly on the sides and I'll show you the shortbread effect in just a minute here. And I'm just putting that leftover on the bottom and I'm just spreading it so that all the areas are even and I don't have thicker pieces of crust in one area and thinner in others. I want it about the same all the way across. Okay, so we have the pie crust already here and you can see how it's completely even and it's flattened along the tops of the pie pan. The last step we need to do is to take our fork and just prick holes in it so that as this cooks in the oven, you don't lose the shape. It gives it room to expand while it's cooking. So I go all the way around the edge and then I go in the middle. When I first started doing this, the first time I saw it, I thought, oh my goodness, all of the filling is gonna run out and I chose not to prick it. Well, that was a mistake because the pie crust lost, lost its shape completely and um, the holes kind of fill in as they cook. So we have it ready to go. Let's go ahead and put it in the oven. So we'll put this in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Right in the center of the rack. It sounds like the timer is going off. Let's take a look at that tart shell. Oh, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. So the tart shell, you want it cooked because this dessert is not going to be cooked again. You notice that it's golden brown in the middle. That means that it's cooked all the way through and around the edges, but it's not burnt. You don't want a burnt tart. I'm going to put it on the cooling rack because this needs to cool completely before we add um, the filling in there. And one of the things that I like to do in order to make it easier to put the filling in is I'm going to take the back of the spoon and gently press against this edge, giving me that definite shell to hold the filling. So I'm just gently pressing in, getting my shape back and now it's ready to just cool completely. Okay, while that cools, we'll make the filling. Very easy, three ingredients. You have a full square, eight ounce of cream cheese. Just toss it in your bowl. You take a half a cup of sugar. It can be a generous half. And just pour it right over the cream cheese. And this area, you can use whichever way you want. My favorite ingredient is using almond extract. You can also use vanilla extract. It really depends on what fruit you're going to use that day. So I'm going to put a teaspoon and a half of almond extract. My family loves almond extract, so you notice I let it drip over a little bit because it'll be their favorite. And then we're just going to mix it with the beater until it's smooth. And the filling is done. Talk about easy, huh? Okay, the third step is making the glaze. You always want to put a glaze on the fruit to keep the fruit from turning bad and it will actually let your fruit last for more than a day in the refrigerator. So this is a real basic, simple fruit glaze. You take six ounces of limeade or lemonade if you wanna have a lemon flavor. Um, I've happened to make this before, so I have the other half here because I decided to economize. And I'll just put my limeade in the pan. I take 
one tablespoon of cornstarch to help it thicken. Just dump it in. A quarter of a cup of sugar. And again, we'll just dump it in the pan. And lastly, we'll take about a half of a lime. And um, I've already rolled it to make it a little bit more tender and just squeeze it right in there just to give some more freshness to that frozen limeade. Very good. And I'm gonna take my wooden spoon and just kind of mix things up a little bit just so that it's mixed a wee bit. We'll take it over to the stove, cook it on medium heat for a little over two minutes until it's thick and totally mixed. I always start out on high just to get the temperature up on an uh, electric stove and as soon as it's hot, I'll turn it immediately down to medium. You don't have to stir it all the time, but I prefer to stir it more often than not. And that way I get all that cornstarch mixed in with the other juices. You notice that there's less and less there. Okay, leaving the spoon in, let's go ahead and turn it down to a medium heat. A little bit of steam is coming off and everything is kind of cloudy looking and well mixed. So now I am going to stir constantly. And this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Look at the glaze, it's clear, it's thick, and you can smell the lime just beautifully. So I'm gonna bring this over and let it cool, and then we'll put this fruit tart together. So as I told you before, I'm going to take this out of the pan, see how easy it is, just lift it right out, and then I'm gonna gently press with my thumb and it will release from the bottom plate and I can slide my tart on a beautiful serving plate. Then we're gonna take our filling that we already made and we'll just spoon it right on the middle of the fruit tart and spread it out so that it's even. And now we're gonna make it really beautiful. Today I chose to use the colors red, white, and blue and we'll put the strawberries all the way around the edge, kind of touching that shortbread crust. And just layer one after another. It depends on the size of your pan, will depend on how many strawberries you need and how thick you would like to have it. I like to put a lot of strawberries and fruit on mine because it is a fresh fruit tort. And of course, that's one of the reasons it's so delicious. Isn't that pretty? So we can go all the way around. Once we're finished with the circle of strawberries, because I wanted to do something red, white, and blue just to be fun and for summertime be patriotic with my dessert, then I'm gonna line the um, strawberries with some bananas that are sliced. And one more will fill in my circle just beautifully. Okay, so next I'll take my sliced bananas and we'll do the same thing, just go around the circle. You can't cut the bananas too far ahead or else they'll turn brown on you, but this glaze is gonna keep it from turning brown when you serve it. Great. And then to get my beautiful blue color, I take rinsed blueberries and I just scatter them right in the middle. And Gently press down into the filling. The last step is to take a pastry brush, get it wet with this limeade glaze, and just brush all of my fruit to keep the color, the freshness, and add just a little bit of flavor. This recipe will call for more glaze than you would need for one fruit tart. And so the rest of it you can put into some kind of an airtight container and you'll have just enough to make another fresh fruit tart for another day later on in a week or so. And this is the challenge when you have something like fresh blueberries. At first they're gonna move around a little bit, but I can take my fingers and place them right where they belong. Gorgeous. And here you have 
The Real Grandma's Fresh Fruit Tart. Let's go ahead and try a piece. I can't wait till dessert. You hear that nice short bread crunch? And we'll put a piece here on the plate. And let's go ahead and try it out. This is the most delicious dessert. The tanginess of the lime glaze just tantalizes your tongue. And the subtleness of the almond cream cheese with the fresh fruit, it just couldn't be fresher and lighter and more delicious. So I hope you try it and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. This is The Real Grandma in The Real Grandma's Kitchen. See you next time.